everybody. I'm here with the miserable liberal at Ron Placone. How are you guys doing? Miserable. Howdy, howdy. I'm wonderful. Happy as a clam. Yay. Uh, so I just want to really quickly remind you that there's a push by the, our elected representatives to unconstitutionally outlaw protesting Israel. Uh, so the way they're doing it is that you can't have an, so people are, what's a real effective protest is an economic boycott, right? So that's what they're trying to make it illegal to do. Uh, in fact, this is from the ACLU. The bill that's being pushed, uh, is the bill seeks to expand the Export Administration Act of 1979 and the Export Import ba Bank Act of 1945, which among other things, prohibit U.S. persons from complying with a foreign government's request to boycott a country friendly to the United States. The bill would amend those laws to bar U.S. persons from supporting boycotts against Israel, including its settlements in the Palestinian occupied territories conducted by international government organizations such as the United Nations and the European Union. So if the European Union or the United Nations has a boycott, uh, against Israel and their occupa occupation of the Palestinian ter occupied territory, you can't join in. They would make it illegal. It would also broaden the law to include penalties for simply requesting information about such boycotts. Violations would be subject to a minimum civil penalty of a quarter million dollars and a maximum criminal penalty of a million and 20 years in prison. We take no position. However, we do assert that the government cannot, consistent with the First Amendment, punish U.S. persons based solely on their expressed political beliefs. This bill would impose civil and criminal punishments on individuals solely because of their political beliefs about Israel and its policies. That's the ACLU. And we all love the ACLU, right? They're the resist. That's the real resistance. So here's Elizabeth Warren being asked about that bill. It's now this is what you were here you referred to as the BDS movement and and the anti BDS bill. Boycott divestment sanctions. So that's the BDS bill, the anti BDS bill, meaning you can't boycott someone and if you do you get in trouble. So here's Elizabeth Warren. She's going to be asked about this. Let's listen. is I do not support, uh, let me see if we can say this right, uh, I do not support the boycott. I think the boycott is wrong. But I think outlawing protected free speech activity. So she just said she thinks the boycott, she thinks boycotting Israel, for any reason I guess, she thinks is wrong. But she says... So the boycott is wrong. So there you go. She's against the boycott, but she's against making it illegal because it violates our Constitution. That's like the least you would expect from an elected official, right? That's like the least. And she did it. So congratulations to Elizabeth Warren for standing up against her own stupid warmongering party and, uh, and, and stood up for the Constitution. Good for Elizabeth Warren. Good for her. Um, Kirsten Gillibrand, who was originally on board with this bill, Senator, she's withdrawn her support. So people are starting, since the ACLU wrote that letter that I just quoted you, they sent it to all the senators. A lot of them are get, are now going the other way. Well, some of them are. Kirsten Gillibrand is. And then immediately she was sent the, uh, the pro people who were in favor of this bill attacked her. Here's a letter from this guy, Brian Tregman. And it's subject, urgent. We need your help with Senator Gillibrand. This is, I think he's with APAC. This is in the letter that they're sending out. This is in the letter that they're sending out. We need your help. New York's junior senator, Kirsten Gillibrand, has withdrawn her co-sponsorship of the Israel Anti-Boycott Act. 
So this is the letter from APEC. We need your help. New York's junior senator, Kirsten Gillibrand, has withdrawn her co-sponsorship of the, an- of the Israel Anti-Boycott Act, sending a, sending a powerful message to her constituents that she no longer supports the fight to combat the international delegitimization of Israel. Now, that's just a smear. Because you can be for the United States Constitution without being for the delegitimization of Israel. You can be against this bill and not be for the delegitimization. So there's, she's saying, so again, this is the old, oh, you're voting against Israel, you're an anti-Semite. This is, this is this, again, this is the smearing, that's what this is. Oh, she's against the, uh, this anti-boycott act? Well, then she must no longer support the fight to combat international delegitimization of Israel. You know, people don't want it to be considered a legitimate state. Mm -hmm. That's what that refers to. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're trying to bridge the false equivalency to anti-Semitism when really it's like, no, we're we're combating this, uh, you know, the the oppressive, the... We're standing uh, up for our war. We're standing up for our constitution. Even though she she said that she doesn't agree with the boycott, she's standing up for our constitution and your right to express your uh your displeasure with with uh, Israel. Even if she disagrees with you. That's what this country's supposed to be about. Hey, I might not agree with your opinion, but I'll fight for your right to have it. Isn't that isn't that what we used to say when I was growing up? I might not agree with your opinion, but I'll 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 fight to the death for your right to share it, right? Something like that. Mm-hmm. That's what we're supposed to believe. Not like uh, I want to outlaw your uh, bad ideas. <laughs> you don't get to have them because I don't like them. And then the APAC tells them, please call Senator Gillibrand's office today. A reminder how crucial this bill is in combating the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement and reaffirming congressional support for Israel. I think $38 billion a year is enough support for Israel. Uh, here's an... Uh, guess guess who's not? Guess who's staying with the bill? Senator Wyden, who's usually a champion of civil rights issues. Super beholden to APEC. And why does he say we need it? So somebody asked him at a town hall recently, what's the impetus behind the bill? What are the behaviors that merited this bill's existence? Which is a great question. What made you guys want to write this bill? What what were the actions that you saw in society that you wanted to stop? That's a good question, right? Here's what he said. I believe the concern is that the boycott movement has grown. Yeah, and oh, people are using their goddamn free speech, their constitutionally protected free speech all over the fucking place, and that's concerning to Senator Wyden. That the boycott movement has grown. I happen to believe that there is a line to be drawn between protecting the rights of the individuals. That's why I described all the things that I've researched that a person can do that speak to your First Amendment rights. I think that's different than being part of a boycott with the Arab League. That's the distinction. So if the Arab League wants to have a boycott of Israel economically for whatever reason, and if you join in on that, Senator Wyden wants to put, wants to make it illegal. What's this distinction what? he's speaking about? That's no distinct. What is he like? Like, like where, where's his distinction at? So you could, I could, so I can do it on my own. So I can do this on my own. I can protest Israel on my own and divest everything on their own. But I just can't say I'm going along with someone else who's doing it. Is this the bullshit argument Senator Wyden's trying to make? Or if they stop doing it, am I allowed to again? Yeah. Like, like if the Arab League changes their mind, well, then can I, I can. Yeah, or an individual can like well, what's, what? What's when, he saying? Why are my rights predicated on what the fucking Arab League does? <laughs> why? Why does that have anything to do with my constitutional rights? It doesn't. That's Ron Wyden being beholden to APEC and doing mental gymnastics, trying to gaslight his own fucking constituents. That's how bad the Democratic Party has gotten. That even a guy like Wyden, who everyone considers to be a civil rights hero, look at this bullshit. It's gross. This is gross. 
He also said, I have, I think, probably at least for purposes of today, pummeled everything that I can say. I would invite you and welcome your input. He says, we've had a law in the books for 40 years that prevents American commercial activity from participating in concerted boycotts led by foreign governments. And I guess it could involve the U.N., but we cannot find one instance of anybody being put in jail. So he's saying, because no one's been put in jail by this law, don't worry about it, that we're going to expand this law. That's not the point. The point isn't, is it law good or bad because it gets enforced? The law is good or bad because of what it says in the law. And if it says in the law that you could be arrested, if it says in the law what the ACLU says it says, then it's bad law. And the fact that you go, well, no one's ever been, hey, you know, marijuana is still illegal. They don't arrest anybody for it anymore. It's still illegal. They can. It's still illegal to do what that law says. And now you're, you are expanding it. So there you go. There's the two different uh, views. There's Elizabeth Warren and uh, th- there's uh, Senator Wyden. Very disappointing, Senator Wyden. This is, uh, again, why does Israel get to have single-payer health care and get $40 billion a year in aid? We don't get free. They, and I think, do they have free college in Israel? I'll have to look into that. I wonder if they do. But we don't get anything. We don't get single payer here. Um, that's quite a uh, stark difference in how to handle that. Rod, Rod, Senator Wyden doing mental gymnastics to try to figure out how to support a bullshit, anti-constitutional, uh, chilling, chilling piece of legislation. Yeah, because you know what this piece of legislation really rings to, true with too as well is like it's one of those sentiments like first they came for the yes. socialists and I think like okay so first we have this bill that references a a very complex issue that that brings out a lot of emotion in a lot of people, uh, but then what's to stop it from going towards well you can't you can't boycott a corporation because right. you don't agree with the stuff that they stand for so you right. can't boycott that as an individual if that's your reason like. First, they came for the uh, trade for the, unionists. For they came for the BDS movement, and I was I didn't say anything because I wasn't part of it. Mm-hmm. Then they came for the single payer. First, they came for the Occupy Wall Street people. They came. They came for them. They cracked their fucking heads open. Then they came for the Dapple. Then they came for the Dapple. I didn't say anything. Now they uh, now they're coming for the protesters of Israel. That's me. So I guess we have to say something. <laughs> Okay, Uh, again, more disgusting behavior from leading Democrats, the MIC resistance, ladies and gentlemen. I give you Senator Ron Wyden. Hey, everybody, the next live Jimmy Dore show is August 16th. That's a Wednesday, new time, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. show, 9 p.m. show, August 16th in Burbank, California. Get your tickets right there or at jimmydorecomedy.com.